you ever? Have you ever been told that you weren't good enough? Were you ever told that you wouldn't make it through the rough? Did you ever think that you'd ever grow to be tough? Have you ever thought that maybe you've had enough? When I grew up, people made fun of me. I was bullied and constantly tried to get free. I never understood why people had to pick on the little guy or the kid who couldn't put down the fries. See, I loved fries growing up, but the one thing that nobody told me was that the fries would lead straight to my thighs and that this and that the fat would build around my waist and this newfound luggage would be stuck to me like paste. People would make fun of me in my extra way. They wouldn't even care about the reasons I ate. I ate a lot growing up because life was rough for a kid in my situation. Watching a divorce is never a good presentation. Divorce is hard, especially when you feel you've been placed in a sack, getting drugged back and forth from house to house and then getting dressed in slacks. Because during the mess of your parents splitting, your grandmother ends up passing. <clears throat> your grandmother who would hold you tight and tell you it's gonna be all right. Once you see everything crashing before your eyes, you really start to think about people's lives. See, once I got a little older and started going to high school, I just started to think that God wasn't cool. That God had me placed in this world to watch from afar, never helping me to reach the bar. I never got, um, never helping me to get past the layers of hurt, never helping me to get out of the dirt. In high school, I started not to care about what I did because life just wasn't fair. I never got a choice of who I wanted to live with. I never got what I wanted, even if it was faith. Faith to trust that God, trust God that things would turn around in the end. I had a hard time hopping into this trend. The trend of being able to have faith in another person, my fear and faith was that once I had placed it with someone else, that everything would worsen. At the start of college, I didn't believe in God. I didn't believe his presence even existed. As he pursued my life, I resisted. I did this so I could feel an applaud from the friends I wanted to impress I thought I was making so much progress, but my freshman year of college turned out to be a big mess, doing things I would never confess. Acting out and trying to fit in, trying to get it right for once in my life, I, lo I was lost and had no idea where I was heading. Just holding my chin up and trying to stop fretting. My sophomore year of college, I started to think that I was missing something in my life. Something that was sharp in my heart as sharp as a knife. Something that would constantly be within my mind, something that would constantly remind, remind me that I wasn't alone anymore. Remind me that I have someone to call for. Remind me that I was tough. Remind me that I was heading out of the rough. I started searching for a church that I could call home, a place where hopefully I could go when I felt alone. Unfortunately, after searching about 15 churches, I decided I had enough. I had enough of exploring and decided that it was all just a bluff. I began falling back into what I had wished to leave. I had given up on the life I wanted to achieve. God had something planned and I never realized it. I thought that I'd always remain in his pit. Anyone got a job while they're going to college? While they're trying to gain all that classroom knowledge? At one time, I was a full-time college student with three jobs. You think class is hard? Try, being, try getting all your, all your work schedules to agree. I was working laser tag and it was my first shift. It was at 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. And let me tell you all, the yawns came swift. As I started working, a man approached me and started talking to me. It was nothing special, just small talk, you know. Well, before he left, he told me about his church's college and career group. At this point, I thought nothing of it. As we said our goodbyes, two weeks had passed. And on that second week, I still remember what he had said. So I decided it was time to take a peek. Who knew that that peak at this group would turn into a gaze, a long fixed look into the people that surrounded me in this place. People full of the things I haven't felt since I was little. I was tired of feeling like I was in a pickle. This place was uplifting and I continued going. As I continued to see this group, I continued growing. Through this, God's almighty spirit had been showing. Later, I began to be like the others. I began glowing. Glowing like this aura of happiness and joy. I continued to go, but I had no idea who God was about to employ. I knew it was time to change. So after working one night, I decided to pray. I prayed for a change in my life, something that would change my ways. I looked up and said, God, I'm ready, God, to change my life. And I need to know that you want me, so make sure you make it well known to me. Because I still can't get the signs when a girl is flirting with me. So the next morning I woke up and started the day. I didn't have much going on, so I went to the Grove to say hey. Only one person was there, and he was a pastor who I considered my brother. We would hang out all the time, and I knew that somehow we had to have had the same mother. 
Well, anyways, he finally got to hear my story. Let me go ahead and tell you, I've got trust issues, and yeah, I was worried. He got me to open my past to him, and I was far from okay. I was tearing it up like a big baby because talking about the past came along with all the pain. I will never forget what he asked me next. Want to come with me to run something to FedEx? I said, yeah, so we hopped in the car and we were on our way. I can't remember why I got in because his driving's pretty great. <laughs> While we were on the road, we started talking again, just talking like we were best friends. The next second I realized we were turning into this parking lot at the intersection of the Baltimore Browns. Man, it was scary. Then he looked at me and asked if I would accept Christ in my heart. Have any of y'all had one of those moments where everything happens so quick and so fast that you just can't control anything you do and you just say the first thing that comes to mind? On that day, I accepted God and I felt all my worries being left behind. That moment, I truly started to believe. I was baptized September 1st, 2013 by my best friend. I thought I would never be a part of the Christian church. I thought that I would never let anyone in. I thought that I would never win. 